you want me to All say right. it? Um, um, what's your name, young lady? T-Lock Hanley, but I go by Tila. Okay, um, where you, um, where you from? Um, originally Williamsport, but, slash that, made a mistake. Originally Bloomsburg, but I tell people Williamsport because I graduated from there mm. in college. I had my kids there, I lived there, um, so, and that's Northeastern PA. And how, when did you, how long you been down here from being, being there? Since February of last year. Okay. And um, wait, how, how you, what, what, what's you down here? Why, why you decided to come down here? Well, it came down here because drugs obviously are cheaper. And, you know, it was just easier. And we'd stay a couple days and then we'd go back. Um, we weren't selling them or anything, we were just copping them for personal use. So, one day, um, this lady took advantage of us and slashed our tires and cut our battery terminals and we never made it back home. <laughs> Man, that's how you wound up getting stuck out here? Uh-huh. Wow. Yep. Just two years later. Yep, just about. You're right. Man. Um... So, um, what's your drug of choice? Um, it, when I first came here, it was dope. It was dope for many years, and then I was sober for 15, and then I started up again because my daughter tried to kill herself six times, and I had a fiancé who started smoking and shooting meth that changed into a completely different person that I didn't know anymore. I would try and talk to him, and it was like talking to... to someone else that I never saw before. He walked, talked, acted, everything different. It was more feminine, but he was more aggressive. And it was just, I couldn't handle like it. Feminine, like, like, like from born inside. From like being manly, he just like started gradually turning more like feminine, feminine like, you know, like. The way that he walked, the way that he would talk, move his arms, like, it just got really scary, actually. He uh, choked me out one day for, I think it was two hours, thought I was going to die that day. And uh, he thought he was the Antichrist, and he was talking to the devil, and barking like um, hellhounds, and just crazy, crazy stuff being boarded up in a house, like literally crisscross boards, like from the movies looking like that kind of stuff. And ironically, this one lady came, he had been working on the house um, and it was an old house. Well, when you start working on a house, you can release spirits, she said, and certain things, bad energies. I don't know if I believe that, but she said that, um, him doing meth made it really easy for them to enter into his body, you know. They could have done it anyways, but it might have took a lot longer. And she said, that is probably what's going on. And I was like, that's a lot to take in, <laughs> you know. Especially when your daughter's trying to hurt herself, kill herself. She's cutting herself. She's doing all these terrible things. How's she trying to kill herself? Was she, was she... she was... My, okay, my kid's dad has not been in their life since they were probably, the oldest was probably three. The youngest was a newborn, basically. She was like six months probably um, because he's very abusive and, you know, crazy, does stuff. But what made me leave him in Florida was I went to see the girls to check on them and the baby, he had got stripped down butt naked, he was drunk, got in bed with my children in between them and was laying there with his penis hanging out. Well, what? butt naked, just laying there oh my God. with his arms around their heads. What? And I took a picture and what? I sent it to his sister. What's like, but how was he on? I don't know. He was, I was at the hospital having our daughter Trinity and 
he was at home in my bed with my best friend having sex with her. And my daughter told me this, my oldest. She asked why he was doing that, that she knew it was wrong. So um, I was very, I've had like, you know, that stuff go on in my life with him, but that's why he's not there. Now, Caitlin, she was looking for some kind of masculine or, that's my second daughter. She's the one that tried to kill herself. She was looking for something. I'm gonna wait till that goes by. She was looking for some kind of masculine or fatherly figure. And this guy allegedly was 23 years old from Florida, which we were planning on moving to. Um, and he is Puerto Rican. And she's 14 at the time. So that's a big difference in age for one. How old is he? He was 23, oh, yeah. supposedly. Yeah, which is sick in my eyes. I don't care what anybody says. Mm. They're having sex online. They're sending naked pictures back and forth. They're doing all this stuff. I sent all this information and called. I forget what the organization is that handles that type of stuff. But I also called the police station by my house and around it and, you know, turned him in for that. But he's in Florida. He's in a completely other state. It's very hard to arrest somebody for that when they're not like going from state to state to state to state and like doing this stuff, you know, if he's not crossing state lines or you know what I mean? Right. So, um, that ended with her first time taking a whole bottle of melatonin. She was fine. They said it wouldn't hurt her. Second time she, um, what was it? She took her prescription. She's, she has severe depression and anxiety, and she's bipolar. So she took her prescription, telling them that she didn't think she took it. She forgot. But she's got all these marks all over her arms and stuff, like, doing weird shit. She was cutting. Um, she then tried to kill herself taking my medication, which I had in the lockbox in my trunk of my car, which she could not get to. She got in it, took my meds. Thank God she didn't take my methadone because she'd be dead. I wouldn't have been able to stop it because I wouldn't have known. Then the fourth time she tried to hang herself. Or, yeah, that's three times, fourth and so on. I don't really need to talk about much more about it. You know, you guys get the drift of what was going on. Um, she's, she was very angry because, so, you know, life was hard. My boyfriend is changing into this crazy, weird person I don't know. And my daughter is trying to kill herself, which is not good. I didn't want to feel anything anymore. I felt like a piece of shit because I thought, what did I do to make them, you know, act this way? Did I do something wrong? Did I cause this? Which I knew I didn't. But when you're in a situation like that, you kind of put yourself in, into it and try to figure out how can I manipulate this to go a good way or, you know, fix it or... I need to fix them. You can't fix anybody. They have to fix themselves. And I couldn't fix myself either at the time. I was on methadone, started using dope. Usually, usually at a blocking dose, which I was at 135, you can't do dope and feel it. Well, I had no problem with it. I uh, stopped going to the methadone clinic at a blocking dose. So, blocking dose is around 130 for methadone. Blocking dose. Blocking dose. Blocking. 
So, what so you. What do you mean? I'm on 150. So, what's blocking about? means that you can't, you won't feel heroin like you would. Oh, if you, oh, alright. Once you get, um. Yeah, right, to a blocking dose. Uh, yeah. So. And, and, I, and I didn't know that when I was uh -huh. going in, it was making me mad. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. Uh, so I started using that and then I was still hanging around my fiance even though he's turning into this crazy psychotic weirdo and I'm shooting heroin, shooting meth, doing things I shouldn't be doing, you know, running around. I wrecked my brand new car, brand spanking new car, twice. You know, I got it fixed once, the second time I couldn't. Then I don't pay my fines for that stuff or any of that crap. So, you know, my insurance lapses and all, all that crap. And I'm driving my car illegally and getting pulled over and they're not doing nothing to me. They're just letting me go. So I rack up all these fines and my license gets revoked. And it's just, it's just a, a pattern, boom, 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 boom. A cycle that goes down the road, gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And worse. Now I'm here in Kensington because I was in Shemokin, you know, getting high, blah, blah, blah. Lost my vehicle. Was doing that for like two and a half, three years. Then I got in, meanwhile, before my car got taken, I had gotten a paraphernalia charge. So, okay.